Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I've been a little busy with vacation and a new shift to night shift for my job. However, I've been sucked into a game that is completely hooked, so to speak. I'm going to be playing Naval Action. Naval Action is a hardcore, realistic, and beautifully detailed naval combat sandbox immersing players into the experience of the most beautiful period of naval history when sailing ships ruled the seas. I'm inclined to agree, though I do love the power and majesty of a several thousand ton steel ship sailing the seas. But commanding and piloting a rustic wooden ship of the line is a unique experience. Enough selling the game. Let's get into it. So, in naval action, there's two different servers, so to speak. You have the war server of the Caribbean, where, as it says, the war server, there's lots of risk, danger, and adrenaline. Fight for global domination in the West Indies, which is the Bahamas, Cuba, and the Gulf of Mexico. Sink other players, capture their ships and holdings, which means cities and outposts. Defend your territories and tax other players' trade. Engage in privateering. War server is perfect if you need a little danger in your life. Sounds interesting. But in truth, I've never been one to put my entire, so to speak, budget on the line for games. So we're going to be not be playing the war server. We're going to be playing the peace server, which has calm, tranquility, and relaxation. All nations are at peace. Players cannot attack each other. There is no piracy or privateering. All ships can be captured from NPCs. Peace server is perfect for friendly, peaceful gameplay. I like a more casual, laid-back experience to gaming, but that's just me. Let's load in. Here's my character, Evergreen the Storyteller, matching my wonderful YouTube channel. I'm quite biased, though. <laughs> Start. Loading. Mm -hmm. Entering port. So I've played this game a little bit before starting this recording. I will admit that. I've made some progress in upgrading ships, getting bigger ships, buying some DLC for, I wouldn't say special rare ships since... But uh, nowadays, nowadays, if you use real money to buy premium ships, everyone has them. Kind of like War Thunder of sorts. But in truth, this game, it takes a lot of skill. Every ship in this game, no matter how small or how large, can easily be sunk by the smallest or the largest ships. It depends entirely, much like War Thunder sometimes. But in this game, it's purely on skill. Though, of course, having a bigger ship and the best guns, and the best upgrades and perks, definitely gives you a major advantage. But it really is skill that brings a winner and a loser to the end, the end game board screen. So anyway, let's look through this. We're in port. We're in the port of San Juan. I'll show you where that is, though it's currently off of the northern coast of Puerto Rico. And of course, which I'm really sad to admit this, but I was kind of forced to since my... Uh, my clan, so to speak, which is in the Discord server that I am in, called FNAP. Um, my clan is also in this game, and we decided, well, the, our leaders decided that we would be, instead of in the United States, which is what I would prefer, which in this game would be the uh, 13 colonies, the United States of America, which the, conf the Confederate States of America, as I like to call them back then, since they weren't really a huge country at the time. Instead, we have joined Her Majesty's Royal Navy of Great Britain. Of course, flying the Union Jack, the Navy uh, flag. I'm not very familiar with uh, British naval terms other than the uh, flags, the original nation's flag, the Union Jack. Um, the rest of my clan, of course, is in the British Navy. Um, and we, but, however, there is a variety of nations and different ships in this game. Uh, there's... The British, Americans, French, the Spanish, Germans, though they would be called the Kingdom of Prussia in this time. There's the Russians, which is the old Kaiser, I believe. Um, there's Chinese, there's the Dutch, the Swedes, the Danish, which is from Denmark, if no one knows that. Um, what else is there? I'm trying to think. There's Poland. Um, 
trying to remember all the... There's Sweden, which is really weird because the Swiss are a landlocked country nowadays, but they have ships in this game. What else is there? Uh, there are there are pirates, a pirate faction. Now, you might think we're not at war, even though there's pirates and no privateering. Pirates seem to be a faction in this game, even though we can't engage them. So what this means is you can engage only NPCs or ports, so to speak, which, you, as you can see, guns and forts back there, fort over here and these guns. When you're in a port battle, you engage your ship engages these, and then once you destroy them, you take the port, I believe. Though I haven't ever done one, so I'm not 100% sure on that. But that's what I believe you do. But anyway, uh, you attack only NPC ships. You cannot engage other players, I believe. I, at least that's the idea. However, and also I should mention, you cannot engage other British players. Uh, or you cannot engage players uh, or NPCs of the same faction. You can only engage other enemy nations, so to speak. Um... Since I'm somewhat experienced, I have the rank, if I can find it, of second lieutenant. Actually, no, first lieutenant. I just forgot that I just got promoted. I have a sizable amount of money, but I have quite the fleet of ships. Total of eight, or seven out of eight, in this port alone, though I have eight ships total. I have the standard basic cutter, which is a very small corvette, so to speak. But I have a variety of ships that are... Small and fast, not super powerful in a fight, to big dreadnoughts of mana wars that can take a beating and return it like throwing freight trains at people. Though, of course, people in this time wouldn't know what a train was. At least I don't think so. Anyway, our smallest ship, which I'll sh uh, like to show off my little navy that I have, is a privateer. This little ship I captured from the Germans. German, uh, German crewed privateer. Um, very small, very fast. Much. It's it's actually got less guns than a cutter, but it's infinitely more fast. Though it doesn't have as much armor. In in terms of a combat situation, I'd prefer the cutter over this thing. More guns, better armor, just not as fast. Um, this thing also has less cargo space. Probably a smaller ship, but I I got the privateer because this is my first ship that I ever captured. It's a rank seven ship. Very small, much like the cutter. Enough said. Moving on to our Tier 6, Class 6 ship, the Trader Snow. The Trader Snow is, well, just like the name sounds, a small cargo ship. A very luxurious space of 900 weight. Some rum inside. Uh, this ship is decent at low class combat. It has decent armor, though not the best. The Trader's Brig, I think, is the best one out of the Trader type classification of ships this one i think is number two if i if i remember correctly but a fantastic small little uh transport they're not the best the not the best and greatest transport but for small ones this one's pretty good and does actually pack a punch uh tier five we'll go to our small one this one uh by the way i should mention the privateer and the trader snow are ships that you can only find or buy or take as a prize in game. These are not DLC ships. The next one I will mention is a DLC ship, the HMS Hercules. Originally a uh, ship for the British Navy uh, that would sail in the uh, English Channel hunting privateers. Um, this ship housing 40 guns, very fast, very lethal for lower ship combat. However, the next ship I will show you after this is this, but a lot better. Nearly 14 guns better. But this is HMS Hercules. Next ship, which is also a DLC ship, is the Trinkamale. I'm, I know I just screwed that up, but this is the Trink, as I like to call it. The Trink has a total of 54 guns, is also rank 5, and a DLC ship. I believe the Trink is a French ship, I think. I'm going to put a question mark on the end of that of, I'm not 100% sure. I probably could go to Steam, but I'm too lazy. Oops, someone pinged me. Um, the Trink is a wonderful ship, probably my most favorite since it's the ship I've used the most, minus the Cutter. I've used the Cutter a lot. The Trink is my biggest 
combat ship at the moment, considering I can't crew my larger ships at the moment since I'm only first lieutenant. I do not have enough crew. I only have 220. The minimum, bare minimum is like 280. So we're getting there. We're getting there. I'll probably be like flag captain or something like that before I can crew, have the minimum crew. Uh, very powerful ship. Very big hold. Somewhat. It's 660. Um, but this is my main combat ship. She's a, she's a really fun to fight and take ships. Our next largest ship, I think, is going to be ending of tier 5. Oh, no, I missed one. The Endiamen. The Endiamen is just its namesake. It was built for, originally in history, it was built and to sail to India for cargo missions uh, to basically spice and trade and all that stuff that uh, Europe really wanted those precious items. So this is a massive cargo ship. I have a total of 4 thousand uh weight uh, capable of being carried so this is my primary cargo ship this thing cost six thousand reels which these are your money i currently have over a million when i bought this it dropped me from six uh hundred thousand reels to 470 reels buying this ship i basically went broke of course as you can clearly see i've made all that back um, making money in this game, if you know how to do it, very easy. I'll get into that a little bit later, probably in a different video. This ship, of course, having a total of 30 guns for a tier 5. Not the greatest, but it is a transport ship, not a combat ship. But, of course, 30 guns is still 30 guns, and if you get too close, she packs somewhat of a bite. Next, that is all the tier 5 ships. The next ship we have, which is the... HMS Rootable, or Redoubtable, I'm not sure how to say that, is a Class 3 ship, something of a frigate or a ship of the line, though that uh, classification is very uh, broad in sense. But this thing has a lot of guns, though I currently don't have her armed or crewed yet, but a total of guns she can carry is up to 88. That's 44 cannons per side. That is a massive broadside to just level an enemy ship. Um, and she does pack quite a... She has she packs quite a punch, and she's got some decent armor on her side. Though she's not the fastest ship, from what I've been told, but a very powerful combatant in combat. And of course, because she's a super large ship... I currently don't meet the minimum crew requirements, which is a shame, but all in good time. And next, our last ship, and our largest ship, which is a premium. I should also mention the, uh, the Indian is not a premium ship. I forgot to mention that. It, I bought her through the auction house, which is the uh, ship store. The HMS Redoubtable, uh, Redoubtable? I'm just going to call it the Redoubtable. Um, I think that's actually how you say it, uh, is a premium, bought uh, her for DLC. And the last ship, which is a DLC ship, is the Santa Anne. She is a man o' war. That is the classification of the ship. A massive gum barge that had super powerful armor, super big guns, and a massive amount of them, as you can clearly see. Four decks. Wait, four decks? Four decks. Four decks, a total of 96 guns. And here's the thing, though. This Santa Anne, while a premium, is not the biggest ship in the game. In fact, there are Tier 1 ships, Victories, La Oceans, the uh, Santana, Trinidad, and many, uh, not many others, but ships that are even bigger than this, that are even bigger dreadnoughts, and I would love to get my hands on those. Of course, because the Redoubtable is a Tier 3 ship, and this is Tier 2, I am very far off from even hoping to take her out with a minimum crew. But, as I said with the Redoubtable, all in good time. But she's a beautiful ship. Look at that. Huge, powerful. I would love to sail her into combat. But, one day. But, we'll be taking out the Trink. Considering that I want to get into some combat. Some fun. So, let's load up all crew. 220 of our crew mem members. Make sure we are have all our cannons. So in total, on our lower deck, we have 28 18-pounder guns. We have on our middle deck, 22 9-pounder guns. And we have four 9-pounder guns facing forward. We have a couple upgrades. 
We have British Gunners, we have Concrete Sights, and we have British Rig Refit. Basically, these give us buffs to our ships, allowing us to perform better. The British Gunners gives a, re a reload boost and uh, less cannon crew to function, which is great. Uh, this gives less horizontal and vertical dispersion, making my guns more accurate. And then the British uh, Rig Refit basically just makes my ship turning and fast, uh, better at turning and faster in combat. Um, d decent ship, very decent, very mid uh, mid level ship. It's a shame it's at night. I would love to show the ship off in the day. Uh, we have some stuff aboard. We are fully empty, more or less. Uh, hull repairs to repair the hull if you take damage. Rig repairs for sails and rum, glorious rum. As the great uh, Jack Sparrow s says in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Why is the rum always gone? Well, not here. We have 100 bottles. Though, of course, this is not a luxury item. Rum in this game is used. If you lose crew, you can do one of two things. Either you can come back to port and use reels to buy them, or you can use rum to buy them out, uh, basically, while you're sailing. So it's a luck it's a resource to just in case you don't want to head into a port to buy them, but I I'd never use them use the resource, but it's always there just in case I need it. Anyway, let's leave port. Opening the world. It says entering. <laughs> I can't read. Perfect! I fit in the timer somewhat. I think you need to read to uh, sail a ship. Can't read maps, won't know where you're going. Here's our trink. We are in the port of San Juan. Oh, I should show you the map. Well, let's come to a full stop. Here is the map. Big as she is. Uh, the very tip is all the way up in North Carolina in the U.S. or the islands of Bermuda. And we can go to Florida and along the southeastern side of the U.S., Mexico, Central America... Um, all the way to Panama and the South American northern coast. And, of course, the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, the Bahamas, Cuba, all these places, all these little dots and flags, as you can see, are places you can go. Of course, uh, let's see if I forgot any. So there's Russia, Britain, France. Uh, these towns are free towns. They're just, you know, as the nation states, no, uh, or... Uh, as the nation states, free town, which means they hold no allegiance to any nation. There are pirates, the Spanish, the Brits, which is the, my home port of Kingston or Port Royal. You have the Germans, Kingdom of Prussia. You have the Russians, Russian Empire. You, of course, have the Americans. You have the single Chinese uh, city of Cayo Largo. Don't know why that is, but... They keep getting screwed. Uh, you have the uh, capital uh, capital of the pirates, Mortimer Town. Uh, where else? Oh, yeah. Uh, all the way down here. Then you have the... Uh, I uh, Wilms, Wil uh, Wilhelmstad is the Dutch capital. You have the uh, Polish capital, which is uh, Markabio. I know I'm saying all these wrong. The Polish Lithu uh, Lithuanian. Uh, what else, where else is, uh, na, 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 na. here are the Swedes, though I should say the Swedes capital is, uh, Christiansted, up here, in, uh, Bernsteig Oder. Then you have the French islands over here, oh, completely forgot, or not the Swedes, the Swiss, these are the Swedes, the, Sw uh, the Swedish capital is, uh, Gustavia, right here. And I think that's it. I think that's all the factions. So I should mention, this is a real size world. Well, I say real size world. Um, it is a lot smaller than real Earth, but it still takes sometimes out an hour or so of real time in real life to go from here all the way to up here. Um, just last night, oop, I just hit my phone. Uh, just last night, I sailed from San Juan right here all the way up to Bermuda. This was like a two and a half hour real time sailing. Now many people would probably be discouraged by that. They just want the constant action. They just want to get into fights and just constantly get where they need to go and not take forever. Well, I think that's the beauty behind this game. It offers a real sense 
of being on a ship. You don't have engines. You have sails. It takes a while to get somewhere. You can't travel 40 knots. I mean, you can in a really super small ship because there is a slight buff to wind in this game uh, that's slightly unrealistic. At, at least I think so. I'm not sure if sailing ships could get up to 40 knots. I don't think they could, especially super small ones. But, uh, but I love this game. This game is a huge ton of fun. It, yes, the, the boring parts of waiting for your ship to get from one place to another. But once you get into battle, it's high-packed action all the time. So we're going to go from San Juan to this little triangle of Fiordo, Passage, uh, and uh, Viquez, a Prussian or I'll just call them German, a German, French, and British port on the island uh, near the island of Puerto Rico. So when I first started, uh, I chose America, which I started up in Charleston, and I sail sailed all the way down to Corrientes to learn, hey, the rest of my clan had decided to become British, start at Port Royal, so I had to delete my account, load back in as a Brit, Sail all the way from Port Royal, all the way back to Corrientes, which is right here. And that's where we had our uh, base of operations for our clan for a while. And we uh, raided up and down the coast of uh, northwestern Cuba. Or Cuba, as I like to call it. Because I like saying things in Spanish accent. It's fun. Um, of course, we learned that a, economically, we were super far from the action. Where there was a lot of uh, great towns and cities. For example, La, uh, La, La Venace and Mortimer Town are. This is a very powerful port that has lots of combat. The British port of La Venace is uh, a port that has a lot of shipbuilding and a great economy. But the biggest port that I think has the best economy is San Juan, which is why we made our base here um, in San Juan of Puerto Rico. Originally in the Prussian port of Corrientes, Cuba, now in. San Juan, Puerto Rico. Huge sail. Took us at least an hour and a half to get from here all the way over here. Of course, we did stop at La Venace and Mortimer to create outposts, but still, it took maybe five minutes each place stopping. Long sail, but definitely worth it. It was very fun to travel with my buddies and go sailing places. Anyway, let's get underway. We have, we're with the wind somewhat. Ooh. Van Hamburg and Constitution. Oh yeah, so here's some of the ships. A Von Hamburg, I believe, is a German uh, ship. And we have the USS Constitution model of ship, which is US. There's a there's a variety of ships. The Bellona, which I think is Spanish. The Intergremenland, I don't know how to say <laughs> ship names, is uh, German, even though it is currently being fla uh, flag flown for it is German. The Bellona, another Spanish ship, crewed by the Brits. Uh, Van Hamburg, Constitution, both British ships. I'm just vibing. So, as you can see, you have a little compass down the bottom to show where you want to go. It currently shows that I'm at full sail. As you can clearly see, every sail on my ship is out. I'm making 30 knots. Now, this ship probably wouldn't make 30 knots in real life on a good day. With full wind at the back, uh, into the sails or at an angle, whatever the best direction for wind is for a ship. And, like, all the... like Because uh, I know you can... In real life, they had extensions. You could attach sails like onto the side for extra, you know, speed, which you can't do in this game, which I'm very sad about. Um, but even then, I don't think you could get up to 30 knots. Maybe like a super small cu cutter or corvette maybe, but or a privateer or something like that, but not this ship. So in the open world, which is currently in the mode we're in right now, open world, you can sail a bit faster uh, than a standard ship could, but once you get into the combat section, your ship behaves and handles like a real ship would. Oh, hey, look, a USS United States. It's a frigate. Not the greatest ship in the game, though. It's actually kind of terrible, according to my buddies in the clan. Supposedly that ship's not the greatest, but I want one just for the namesake of the vessel. Ooh, a fight between Great Britain and a pirate. The pirate's attacking the British... Fortunately, I cannot join that battle because probably it's been going on for very long. And also, I do have zero interest in losing my ship. It didn't cost me anything other than the cannons and all the supplies. Also, as you can see, we are catching fish and salt. I don't know how you catch salt. I assume it's you scoop uh, a bucket of uh, 
water out of the ocean and then let it uh, dehydrate and then, you know, all the salt stays. Uh, what ship is that? A Bologna? It looks so big from all the way over. What's that? <gasps> trader Snow! We found our first target. A German Trader Snow. That is going to be our prey for today. All the way over. She's sailing away from us. Let's see if we can cut her off and move in to engage. You could just come this way, Mr. Trader Snow. We, I, I promise I won't bite. I will shoot you, though, with very large guns. Very large. <laughs> yeah, no, the Trink is a beautiful ship. I love the Trink. The Trink is so much fun to play. Oop, she changed course? <gasps> no, you went into the wind, you little bastard. Come back here. So anyway, as you can clearly see, the, the direction of our boat, little silhouette. But also, you can see this little blue arrow. I say little. Uh, it is the uh, where the wind is coming from. So what that means is that this battle is going to take into the wind, which is really irritating. It sucks. Oh, oh, good. Please come towards me. No, I'm just closing with you. Um, yeah, this is going to be kind of an annoying battle to fight. But we'll make do. Always do. No, no, no. Come here. Come here, come here, come here. Fuck. Uh, come on, get some wind in your sails. No, he's pulling away from me. Damn it. Maybe we can cut across the wind this way and catch up. Oh, we could probably do that. Oh, yes, we can do that. Absolutely. All right, increase speed. Come on, come on, come on. And attack. Hell yeah. So we got to stay in the circle, and we'll engage. And in battle we go. So, obviously, this is bullying. The Trader Snow is a much smaller ship than I am. I'm a frigate, or a small... I guess you consider this thing a cruiser compared to something the size of a destroyer nowadays. Also, uh, I decided to pick the most American-looking flag as possible. Yes, I have the Union Jack still on mine. But this is the uh, East India Trading Company flag. And I have a couple uh, banners at the top of my mast. Hopefully we can get into battle without so much as a... Oh, cool. I completely forgot I have my perks. Start fully loaded and double shot. Double shot. Let's keep the standard shot for now. All right, let's get underway. Come on. Come on, crew. Come on, crew. Let's get, let's get, a uh, men up to the sails so we can get underway. Don't turn away from me, you little prick. All right, let's cycle this gun deck. I want to hit him. Sir, it's very rude shooting at me with your, uh, butt guns. I'm going to have to respond with, uh, mine. Oh, if you keep giving your broadside, I'll be happy to give you a... Full dose of steel and lead into your boote. Yep, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. I want to fire right now. Lose all my shot into the water. Alright, let's try this for size. Fire! Kind of missed a lot since I wasn't paying attention, not really. Well, I actually didn't miss the whole lot, actually. I messed them up kind of bad. All right, let's turn into the wind. Oh, here's another thing that you can do in-game. You can use your Q and E and Z and C keys. Oh, I turned the wrong way. Terrible! Uh, you can uh, manually turn your sails so you can uh, maneuver your ship very easily, though, of course, it takes someone experience, which I'm... I have knowledge on it. I'm not experienced in any shape of the word. Experienced. I'm actually kind of bad at it, to be honest with you, but we'll make do. Come on. Ow, 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 ow. I'm being shot in the ass. Actually, I think he's just missing, which is funny. So, we'll make it work. Alright, cool. And they're trying to make a breakaway. I don't think so, guy. 
Come back here. You're not allowed to run away from me. I'll shoot you with my bow guns. So as you can see in the bottom left corner, you can see the little arrow that indicates your wind. Oop, let's see if we can give him this broadside. And let's hammer him. I think all those are going in the drink. Yep. Oh, I'm so sad. I just wasted all that. No! <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I need to get a lot closer. I'm not a good shot. I kind of, I'm terrible at that. Let's close the distance. Ouch, 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 ouch. I say out. Why am I saying out for? He's messed up. I'm fine. Yep. So, I should also mention, there are two different types, well, I, I should say now, there are five, well, there's five types of ammunition. I'm not sure what that last one is, but the first one is standard shot. Just, you know, standard cannonball. The second one, which has an ammunition counter, is number two, which is your chain shot. Very good, so I should mention this. Number one, your standard shot is good, as you can see in the top right corner. You can destroy uh, enemy armor, and then once you uh, destroy the middle bar, the ship sinks, the enemy ship sinks. And also, if yours goes down to none, you also sink. So be... Keep that in mind when you're engaged. Don't run away from me, you little bastard. Come here. Let it happen. I need to be careful. Yep, I have leaks already. Okay, let's turn on. Let's depower our sails so I can stop leaning like crazy. Anyway, uh, so that's what uh, uh, standard shot is good for. Next is your chain shot, which was number two. Very good for demasting ships. Basically, of course, if you don't have sails, you can't move or maneuver, which means you can't run away. So, very good. Hit him with my forward guns. Uh, it's about to be a bad day for you, buddy. Bad day for you. Well, I mean, we are in combat, so it makes sense. Uh, full right rudder. All right, narrow. And goodbye. Look at that damage. Yike. Yike. Next, another broadside. He's done. He is so gone. Done zoed. Yeah, this is bullying, but I don't care. I'm having fun. Ooh, should I show up the boarding mechanic? No, I just want to sink him. I, don't, I already have a Trader Snow. I have zero interest in taking this boat. Maybe if it was a Trader's Brig, I might be more interested. But we're going to sink this guy. We are pulling ahead of him. Let's uh, slow down a little bit. Keep you in range. Almost loaded. Nope, stop it. We are going to pass them, and I don't like it. All right, I'll slow. Demast de ourselves so we can slow down. Turn our mass out of the wind so we slow down even faster. No, this guy's trying to go behind me. Go away! Go past me so I can shoot you. Demast. In the wind's shadow. I always forget what that means. Yes, keep going. All right, and goodbye. I think I just missed with half of my main battery, but all right, sails to full. Ooh, lost some crew passing me. All right, buddy, that's fine. And goodbye. Ooh, demasked him, ouch. That's gotta hurt. All right, I'm gonna come to port, get our sails into the wind, and I'm just gonna use my other broadside to finish this guy off. I'm gonna shoot him right in the stern. Ooh, we leaning hard. Ooh my. Come along, come along, come along, long, long, long. 
Time to go to your doom. And goodbye. And down he goes. And he sank. <laughs> Ouch. That's gotta really hurt. Can I loot him? I, I deserve it. I did sink him quite a bit. Well, we'll give it a minute. It usually does take a second for uh, us to... Oh, there it goes. Inspect Hall. Let's see what he had. Ooh, some tea clogs. Oh, season tea clogs? Heck yes. Let's take that from his hold. That's some very expensive wood. Well, tea clogs aren't that expensive, I should state. They're, uh, as you can clearly see, t uh, tropical wood imported from the forests of India. Teak logs are best known for their easy to work with and water resistant properties and considered as one of the best woods for construction of frames, planks, and shipbuilding. Um, I don't know much about that, but uh, they are seasoned, so that means extra good. But we're going to let that ship sink because we, we cannot capture it anymore. We're going to leave battle. First battle of the day was a victory. Bullying, basically, since he's a much smaller ship than I am. But I don't care. It's fun. He's got some money. Got some experience. Should check our experience. Really super low. Ooh, we're kind of... We lost three crew members. That's eh, fine. We'll get some when we go into another port. Let's look for another victim. Actually, how much is my recording going on for? Oop, that is not the right thing. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Uh, well, we'll go around. We'll check out, uh, some of the stuff. Alright, I actually should talk about a few more things on how to make money. Some tips and tricks, maybe. Um, combat is one of the great ways to make money in this game. If you take on, uh, basically, the bigger, more powerful the ship you face, the more XP and the more, uh, dangerous it's going to be. Why am I sailing in this direction? I need to turn the heck around. What are you, Constitution? Okay. What are you way out there? Trade another trader snow, captain by the British Constitution, but three ships in that force. I have zero interest in dying. Um, turn, turn, turn. Head full. Constitution. A Bellona. I would take on a Bellona, but she has more guns than I do, and I, I'd probably get murdered. An Ingram, same story. And the USS United States captain by the British. Ooh, caught assault. So, a uh, basic way that I should, uh, for tips. Ooh, who's this who came out of port? Oh, an enemy player. A pirate player in a Hamburg? It looks like a Hamburg. Set and sail from Russian uh, port. Anyway, so one of the things I should mention that you should definitely do, have fish all the time. Basically, press B key. It'll, like, flash. That means you're fishing. You will collect, just randomly, some form of fish, salt, and every rare once in a while, which I've gotten two of them, is a little bottle with, uh, I forget what it's called. A uh, bottle with map or something? I forget what it is. Uh, basically, you can open it, and you can, uh, basically, if, if you click right-click on it and click use, somewhere on the map, you'll uh, get a, a, like a little picture with like a sail that looks like it's sinking. And this will be a shipwreck. You can go to the shipwreck with a ship, and you can uh, loot it, which actually, the ship actually has a huge amount of loot. Uh, and many of it actually really good loot. Um, as you saw in the menu, uh, that uh, Trader's Brig had some season logs. Teak season logs, as I mentioned. Back in port in San Juan, I have nearly 1,500 standard teak logs, and I got that from one ship. Just one, a a, uh, a sunken um, ship from g just using the bottle, which also led to me uh, sailing all the way to Bermuda, which was in in truth a ginormous waste of time. But but it was a fun it was a fun experience. I got to talk with some of the guys last night while I was sailing here. So basically, I had two. I was just going around murdering small ships and some large. Yesterday. And I got my first bottle, so I sailed all the way up to about, like, here-ish. We'll, we'll set the protractor where it was. Center of the protractor, right here. Exactly where the first shipwreck was. 
So then, while I'm on my way here, I got a second bottle. Really weird, like super rare chance of having two at once. I say two at once. Um, I technically used the first one, so I didn't have the first one anymore, but I had a second one while I hadn't visited the first shipwreck. So here's another thing too. Do not use the shi uh, a ship, uh, the bottle while you have a shipwreck uh, unexplored because you will lose the first one. Like it's gone, you just wasted it. So I waited to use it, Went got to the first one. Use the second one. It took me all the way up to like, let me zoom out, about here-ish. That was the second shipwreck. So I'm out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I just figure, okay, I'm practically like a fifth of the way to Bermuda. Might as well go the full distance. So I went the full distance, went up to Somerset Flats in St. Georgetown. It was kind of boring, but it was cool to be in the chat with some of the guys from the clan. And uh, it, was, it was just a fun time. It's really fun to just uh, get in the game and just have fun with your buddies. Um, I should also mention, though, coming up here, ginormous waste of time. There, There's nothing here. No AI ships, no players. I mean, it's obvious. Why would you go here? So here's my advice. Unless you want to go there for the experience, and I should advise that experience is only once, unless you just want to do a fishing trip of just sail from somewhere to there and then sail back to get a huge amount of fish, don't go here. Just take from it my experience. Don't go to Bermuda. There's no good gear, uh, there's no good, uh, like, super good uh, goods, loot, combat, secrets, there's nothing there. Which I think is really sad, because, I mean, you would think you go somewhere really super far out of your way, they would reward you. Not that, not, unless there is something that I don't know about the place, there's no reward here. Which is, I think sucks. There should be something there. But it is what it is, and I think I ran aground somewhat. Yep, ran aground. Oop, wrong button. Let's head back to San Juan. Hey, Constitution. She's so pretty! I want one. I ran aground again. Dang it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so as I was explaining about the economy system. So, the great way to make money is to just fish. Fish, fish, fish all the time. Just that, like now, I just caught a needlefish, this one right here. As you can see, it says converts to one provision. If I right-click on this and it says convert this fish or convert all fish, it will turn into something called a provision. A provision, you can then go and sell at a port and get money for. It's basically a free resource that you can get some money for. However, and here's the great thing about San Juan, which is probably why we're here in the first place, because our clan leaders are great and wonderful people that are incredibly smart. Um, they learned, as I checked out in the market, is that San Juan is the highest, uh, basically, buyer of provisions. A huge steeping price. Um, I have that written down somewhere. Let me go into port real quick. I have it written on my phone. Let's go to my notes. Here it is. Uh, provisions sell for 849 each. Sometimes the cheapest you can buy them elsewhere is like 30 reels. That's nearly, I don't even know how many times more that is for in terms of profit. So if you have like, because uh, the highest I've ever sold is 879. I've nearly got like a million reels off of getting all those provisions. And that was from just fishing. Well, I did buy a few of them. Like from uh, Georgetown and all the places up there, I did buy a few provisions from that port since it, it was like, we got to make money somehow. But I came back to San Juan and sold them all and I made a huge lump of cash. I had like two million. I also had some cool jewels called Madagascar jewels that are pirate goods. I sold them at uh, Bermuda, got a huge amount of money. The only thing that I could really say was really good about the place is I think Bermuda uh, will buy like stolen goods for the most across the entire map, but it's only like sizable, like 20, like 20K extra. So it's not really that worth it. But of course, there's only like one other place. So I mean... If you want to go there, go there. I'm not stopping you. It's just, it's kind of a waste. Unless you're there for the experience. But anyway, 
and then you can sell the provisions, which San Juan is the best. Uh, San Juan is the best harbor to uh, sell these uh, goods here and make a huge amount of money, which is what I do with the needlefish. I save them up in my warehouse. Just, you know, shift them in. Say, shift, shift, shift. Okay, I'll just sell the salt. By the way, you cannot convert salt. I'm very sad about this. You don't need salt to convert the fish. It is honestly just a random resource that you pick up that's not really worth all that much. You get two reels per salt. Not really all that great, but it is free, so it is free money. I get eight reels from this. Sold. But yeah, that's naval action. Very uh, interesting economy, very uh, fun combat. I love this game. This game is a lot of fun. I uh, look forward to making more videos about this. In fact, it w one probably will be coming up when I have some of the boys online that we can go do a fleet action, go face again, uh, some very powerful ships and our powerful ships and just have a big old blast. Anyway, if you have enjoyed, I would love to know about it in the comments. If you want to see anything, please let me know as well. Um, if you'd be so kind, I'd love to see uh, a, if you could uh, hit the like button and subscribe. That would be awesome as you help me and my channel grow um, and also see more fun videos. Anyway, yeah. You all have a great day. Bye.